speech. And now we jump back to the um, research institutions. Professor in Physical Chemistry, University of Florence, Mr. Ugo Bardi, uh, will, give a, will give a presentation on trends in the world's fossil hydrocarbon production, the effect of declining energy returns. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, it's a pleasure and a honor to be here to speak to such a distinguished audience, and I'm listing here the institute, institutes of research um, where I belong, uh, I should specify, first of all, that uh, what I will be telling to you are my opinions, but these opinions have been built in my work with uh, the University of Florence, the Association for the Study of Peak Oil, and the Club of Rome. So today I will focus on oil. Uh, so far, we have been speaking mainly about gas, which uh, you all know about the crisis which has been developing during the past uh, months. But in reality, we are right now facing a new crisis, a major crisis in crude oil, which is a crisis which is taking the shape now of diminishing prices, which is just as bad for the market as rising prices, although for our viewpoint often we think that low prices are good, but uh, it is not so easy because low prices cause a lot of problems, as I will try to show to you. So first of all, to put things in perspective, let me show you the history of oil prices, which goes back all the way to about almost a century ago, let's say 80 years of history. As you can see, the red line represents the inflation corrected prices, and you can see that there is a sort of boundary. Prices cannot go too high because if prices go too high, people cannot afford to buy oil anymore, and uh, that uh, the results of the destruction of the demand, a well-known concept in economics. Also, there is another problem, opposite and symmetric, which is the destruction of the offer. If prices are too low, then companies or the oil industry cannot produce and sell at a profit. So they, they don't produce. Nobody sells at, at a loss. So we have this, this problem. And during the past years, we have had this um, behavior of the oil prices, which uh, you can see a trend on the increase. So the question is, uh, um, why do we see this increase, general increase in costs, or well, better say prices? And what are the present trends? And the problem that we have right now, why are prices so high? Because let me just you show a datum that um, comes from uh, Goldman and Sachs. Almost all new developments have good profitability at US $120 per barrel, which means that you find oil today, you develop it, you, uh, or you develop some of the new kinds of oil which are so fashionable, like shale oil or or oil shares, oil from oil shares, which is a different thing, then you need a market price of the order of more than $100 per barrel in order for this development to be profitable. So you can see what is the problem. The problem is that uh, if prices are not so high, as they are not now, I was just looking five minutes ago at the prices, and now they are under 77 dollars per barrel in the world. So that is a problem because you spend a lot of money to develop oil that then you have to sell at a loss. And this is a big, big problem. Let me show you a, a comparison here. You see on the upper left, you see an estimate of how much it costs to produce oil. And on the right down, you see how much oil sells. And this um, um, is already a bit obsolete. The figure below, I made it last week, but now you should see the decline of oil prices to go down a, a significant dip from these values. We are now, as I said, around 76 dollars per barrel and something. So what happens? As you can see, the present prices under 80 dollars per barrel already cut off a significant fraction of the 
oil producing regions. If prices stay at this level, then we have to cut off about 10% of the present production, which is not profitable. If they were to go back to the levels which were considered normal 10 years ago, then we would lose 50% of the world oil production. And that's, that's a big, big problem. So the question is, why do we have this behavior? What is causing this behavior? And the problem is, very simply, that producing oil is costing more and more for a simple reason that uh, I call depletion. Depletion doesn't mean that we run out of oil. We are not running out of oil. We still have plenty of oil to develop, to produce. The problem is that the cheap oil has been already produced. So now you have to move into expensive oil. And uh, so this is the production trend worldwide. And you can see the blue uh, line, the blue uh, shape in the figure, is the conventional oil, crude and condensate. And uh, you see this has been flat for the past uh, 10 years or so, but we're still increasing production because of the yellow and black oil, which is shale oil and Canadian sin crude, which is made from tar sands. So we can still increase the oil production by using expensive oil, which is the, can, the kind which is damaged by the present trends. Because you see, we have been discussing a lot about shale oil and shale gas, which are very similar in the way they are produced. And I would like to show you a piece of shale. It's that rock, that piece of rock that is where shale oil and shale gas are produced from, which is not easy. I mean, you just don't dig a hole into the ground. You have to frack, to break, to crush this piece of rock. And uh, there is a lot of technology to do that, but it remains expensive. You know, we have some very beautiful technologies, like this cell phone, but you cannot break that rock with a cell phone. You need, you need heavy technology, and that's expensive. I'm just showing you some figures. The kind of technology you use, and anyway, even if you de deploy all this expensive equipment, the decline rate of shale oil and shale gas wells is fantastically rapid. The decline, you, you're talking about 80% loss in three years. So you must keep fracking. And that means keep spending money to frack. And that means that the financial system will pay you this money if there is a perspective to sell what you produce. And if prices are not high enough, then the financial system will not provide these resources. So we will see a decline in production. That's the big problem we are facing now, the major crisis we are facing. Everybody is worried in the world of oil production because if prices keep going down as they've been do doing that, uh, then we will see a decline in oil production. It will, uh, it will affect a lot of people and industry. And ultimately, us, which are the users, the ultimate, ultimate customers of oil and gas. So eventually, I will go very fast now. That's the main point I wanted to show you. The point is that uh, high costs are the results of the fact that you need energy to obtain energy. So to frack this rock, to break this rock, you need energy. Then you get energy out of it, but there is a balance in between. So and that's a ratio which has been going down, has been going down during the past uh, century or so. At the beginning, you would spend one and get 100 from conventional oil. Now we are around 10 to 15. You must spend one to get 15. And when you go to shale oil, we don't have exact data, but we are below 10. So this is a physical factor, a uh, factor of depletion, which uh, unfortunately cannot be fixed politically, cannot be fixed financially. It is a physical factor related to energy. And there is nothing to do. We can calculate how things stand. I just wanted to show you one data because the subject of the energy return for renewables is very controversial. You can find oof, zillions of studies and data all over the web. But I just wanted to show you that renewables today are comparable to oil in specific conditions. That, that means energy production, in electricity production. I mean, if you want to 
use renewables to make fuel for cars, that's a different matter. But, uh, but uh, renewables, the, the advantage of renewables is that their, their return, the energy return is growing because of improving technology and scale factor, whereas because of depletion, the energy return of fossil fuels must necessarily decline, and the problem is going to become worse as we go into the future. So um, I will skip that. I'm just, uh, just showing that you need a lot of energy investments because renewable can produce energy, but we need to invest in renewables and to develop the concept that was developed in Germany, which is energy wind. Energy wind. But let me conclude because... Uh, I, I've been terrorized by our moderators that I have to stay within 10 minutes. Just summarizing my points, producing energy requires energy. The energy return of fossils is declining because you have this physical factor, not a financial factor, not a political factor, it's depletion. And we face this no-win situation in which high prices um, destroy demand, low prices destroy offer. It's a no-win situation which is going to get off worse. So uh, there is a lot of interesting political considerations about energy security for Europe, but in the long run, the only possibility that we have to be really energy secure is to invest in renewable to keep going along the road that Europe has chosen in developing renewable energy as a measure and significant fraction of its energy mix. And uh, thank you very much. And I have some, some data. If you want to know more about this subject, you can go in this um, site. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your speech.